Hello everyone, my name is Ethan. This is my channel, Gringo Campesino. So I was selling my coffee a few days ago and I noticed something that I thought would be interesting to talk about. Um, I was moving these sacks of coffee weighing a little over 100 pounds. So I uh, accidentally broke a sandal, just losing my footing when I had it on my back. And so I finished the day off barefoot. And I noticed a lot of strange looks um, I'm kind of used to it. It's not a problem for me. I've been weird for 15 years uh, living overseas, places where I didn't grow up. But anyway, other people might think being weird is a big deal. And what I'm talking about is not default weird, not weird as in you're a foreigner, so you're automatically weird. I'm talking about if you have some kind of unusual thing about you, and I don't mean this as an insult to anyone. Uh, a lot of people are uh, tall, over excessively tall, um, and in Colombia, people aren't generally tall. So if you're, you know, six five gentleman, it's it's going to stand out, and you're going to be seen as kind of weird. Uh, me being bald here in South America is not all that common, so it's kind of a, a weird thing. Um, there's people, maybe white guy with dreadlocks. That would be seen as weird in another way. Uh, or maybe transgender. Weird, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but at the same time, it is unusual. Um, there is, on that comment, though, there there is not really a bigoted society down here, as far as I can tell. There is just happens to be someone who is trans in this small little town, which was surprising to me. Um, but... Uh, but that's not really the point. The point is, what do you do and how does society react to you being weird? Well, there are some dangers about being weird. Um, to go to the most extreme, um, when I was living on the coast, which is a little bit more dangerous, uh, tourist town, but because of the tourists, it was kind of a battleground for a couple cartels that were looking to sell in that area. And there was a trans woman who I knew in passing, um, would say hi, but really nothing more than that. And she was gone um, without any warning. And some friends of friends told me that she was threatened. She was given an ultimatum to leave or that she would be killed. So I don't know if that's true or if it was just a threat, but that's pretty dangerous sounding to me. Um, but there are some lesser dangers. There are some lesser things that you have to worry about. One is just level of acceptance if you're really outside of the norm. Um, down in towns like this, in the rural areas of most parts of the world, you really depend on your neighbors for security. If it would be just to call the police if they hear something happening at your farm or your house, it could be walking down the street. You know, you could get a young guy telling some other guys, don't mess with him, we know him. Uh, so acceptance is really important. Not necessarily that the thieves are going to think of you differently, but the community around you will think of you differently. Alternatively, if you are weird to some negative degree or what they perceive as negative, I think there is a higher chance that you will have something stolen or be mugged or robbed. Again, not in a small town like where I live, but it's a, it's a relatively higher chance in other parts of, of Colombia and South America. And then we have things like um, more problems with bureaucracy. So I think I've mentioned this before in other videos, but if you are seen as extraordinarily weird, you're going to bring some stereotypes about that you might not understand. It might not be the same stereotypes from your home country. So if you go into a bank and you, for example, have dreadlocks, you know, you might not be seen in a positive light by the workers in the bank. And so they won't reject you. They'll continue and they'll probably smile, but they're not going to go out of your way, out of their way to help you necessarily. Uh, I even see it from what I'm talking about, the default level of weirdness. I see there's a huge difference when I go into a government office wearing a nice collared shirt or just a normal t-shirt. And definitely if I'm walking in with dirty jeans and 
a farm t-shirt. They, they have no interest in going beyond the simple help that I'm asking for. And then, of course, there's the never-ending feeling of discomfort if you are weird. You know, it's not a bad thing. People might uh, look at you favorably if you're six five, really tall guy. But you might not like being that celebrity in town. You might not like everyone knowing who you are, even though you know a very small percentage of them. So there's a, there's a little bit of danger of things to consider in that aspect. So it, it seems pretty simple and straightforward, but there are a few things that you should do. Uh, one, obviously be friendly at all times. Don't play the victim. I don't think that goes over very well in most places, especially small towns like this where everyone knows each other. Um, because if you accuse someone of acting bigoted or if you accuse someone of treating you poorly, um, other people know the, the other person likely more than they know you. And so they could reject your claim of victimhood status immediately. Um, I had a problem with my neighbor. I had to uh, negotiate with him to share down to tear down a shared gate we had. And he completely rejected the idea. And so I brought up the idea of police and I, I mentioned to some friends that he was being a jerk and they just didn't believe me. It's because they, he's someone in the community they've known for their whole life and they've known me for a maximum of two years. So they're going to side with the person they know longer. So you might dig yourself a hole by claiming victimhood status. Obviously it depends on the situation. So going into a little bit more detail, you have to know when to be weird and when not to be weird. So there was a parade in uh, the nearest city, uh, about 40 minutes from me. And the parade was like the, the annual coffee parade. And there was a lot of trans men and women dancing on the parade. Didn't see any problems no community members were speaking bad about them. But it is something that was happening. So that was the time and the place to show that they were weird. But you walk around town during time of church or with kids, you might see people react in a very different way. So again, I'm using the extreme form to make a point. But my case you know, I'm not going to walk around barefoot, even though I'm very comfortable walking around barefoot during the parties in the middle of town, just because I don't want people to see me as an outsider, I will try to play the part that they want me to. So just some ideas. If you have any questions, write them down in the, the chat. So this is again, Ethan Gringo Campesino. Thanks for watching.